Hi everybody, Adam Steele here from Hot Pole Studios and today we're looking at Mammoth Bass Plugin from Aurora DSP. Roll the intro! Okay, so full disclosure, uh, Aurora DSP and I are working together on this video. This is a sponsored video, so this isn't a review as such. This is me walking through the plugin and showing you all the cool stuff and some of the great sounds that you can get out of it because there's, there's a lot to go at here and there's a lot to play with. And so I've started with a preset called Lima. Presets are useful for stuff like this because it helps you work through what's going on. And in the intro there, I did a really kind of clangy metal tone, which is what we're starting with here. But there's a lot you can do with this plugin, and it's not just metal, 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 uh, which is really, really useful because it helps it uh, sits in mixes really well. Here's a little clip from a mix that I just did for a band called Mischwald called Punk Rock im Sommer, where the bass used this in that kind of precision bassy, slightly gritty kind of tone. And here's a little bit from a live mix that I did when I first got Mammoth uh, from a song where I played a jazz bass on a the kind of a garage rocky kind of track for Banana Ranch. <laughs> Now back to here, there's all sorts you can go at. So I'm gonna try and break the plugin down a little bit and show you some of the features. So overall, if I just play with this setting, I get this. Which is huge. But let's start at the end and kind of work backwards. There's a blend at the end. That is not a wet and dry blend. Uh, the way the plugin works is it splits the bass sound in two. So there's the low end and the high end. And I've seen a lot of modern producers, myself included, will split bass into separate bands and usually have kind of a clean low end with some good compression and then a highly driven top end that doesn't have much low end in it separately and then bring them all together. And Mammoth kind of does that for you. And that the blend is between low and high. So if I bring the blend to 0%, that's all low end. And here you've got only two real controls. You've got bass and you've got growl. So bass does exactly what you would think it does. At zero, uh, bass is quite kind of uh, well, bass light. And at the top, bass is really bass heavy, and this may clip. Yeah, too much bass, as if there's ever such thing. So somewhere in the middle. That's quite nice. So where was it, around seven? Now growl is kind of like a low mid EQ. It brings in uh, a definite kind of lump in the low mids. And so if I start at zero, it seems it's at zero, I'll play with my right hand and use the mouse with the other and you'll hear it come in. Like so. So if I attack that, I get a real almost Giza Butler type early Black Sabbath grit, which on its own sounds fairly horrible, but in the right context of the right song with the high end blended in, it can really help some meanness come through the bass in that low mid, if that's what we need. 
So let's put this back to 50% and then just make the assumption from there that the base, let's turn the base down a little actually. And then, so it's all kind of clinky and clanky. But from here, I'll start changing things. So uh, the crossover is probably the next thing to look at. And that separates this low end that we just looked at with the high end. And at what point uh, that gets split down the middle. Uh, the default was 200 hertz. This preset's a little lower at 170. And that seems to work quite well for this preset. This is using the blue drive. And the blue drive is uh, a dark glass B7K, uh, which is kind of famous for that gritty, uh, heavily fuzzed, but not, not like a fuzz pedal distortion. It's much more aggressive and much more lean and mean. And you get that. That kind of angry thing. Uh, so then the purple, is apparently based on an AC30 bass head. Not even something I've heard of, but. Let's bring the mids back so we can hear what this actual drive does. And turn off brute mode. So that's sounding good. And then the red, possibly my favorite, is based on the Ampeg V4, I believe. Which is a little bit fuzzy, but then that's quite highly driven. I can always back the drive off a bit. Now, there are more controls. There is, of course, low, mid, and high, but that only affects the top end. So even turning the lower part all the way doesn't add a lot of bass. That's what this control is for. So I can add more low end, but no low end. All the low end. So it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. It affects the tone of the distortion a little bit. So let's turn the dark glass style distortion up and hear the difference in the low. It's subtle, it's very subtle. Let's look at the mids though, because that will make a big difference. Yeah, that's it's more subtle than I thought with quite a big control range, but that high mid would give me a more vintage bass distortion type thing. So if I take a little bit of the high end back out, I can now, with a, a pick, here you go. Sounds good. Now the next control is one that I would not necessarily have known was there unless someone told me, and that's the Mammoth control. So with no Mammoth, it's uh, quite a flat linear EQ. And as I raise the Mammoth, it scoops the low end and really pushes the high. And more. And more and more and more. And you can go crazy with it. You can go too far. This will be quite painful. Yeah, that's quite enough of that. I can hear the hissing. So let's back that down. But then there are a couple more controls. I could go for the, uh, the V4 like this and then up the mammoth. Yeah, that's really dirty. I like it. 
But let's back that off a little bit, back the drive off a bit, because there are other modes now we can play with. There's melt mode, and melt mode takes a lot of the high end off and makes it very doom laden and very fuzz. So melt is... More of a classic kind of fuzz. If I turn up the mammoth, turn up the drive, can get some growl in there if I'm going for that kind of rickenbacker e tone. I might also want to pump the mids and get a 4x12 in there. Because that's the next thing to talk about is these buttons for impulse responses. There's a 6x10 cab, 4x12, 8x10, which I like a lot. And then there's customs so you can load in, load in your own impulse response without a separate impulse loading program. And I think that is genius. Well done. Because that saves me having to have two plugins if I decide I don't like any of these three. That means I could go, you know what? I'm going to pick a different one. And great, fine. So going back a little. I skipped over Brute, because Brute doesn't uh, soften the top off. Brute gives you more gain, more distortion. But I'm going to back the drive off and show you the difference. So this is without Brute. And this is with Brute. And so there's too much mammoth going on here. That's become nasty again, but I'll back the mammoth off. Back some mids away uh, to give this a more classic modern feel. A more modern feel. And you can start to, especially with the dark glass and the brute together, get some real modern kind of. Get that real kind of modern dingwally periphery esque kind of kind of clean but not clean that's with the 610 as well and so that's most of the controls and when you've got a sound you like you can save it as a user preset so i'll call this steel gent and then last but not least there is a slam control so the slam control if you're absolutely gunning the life out of this, but it's just too much uh, in terms of the clank and the level and the volume, you can turn the slam level down and that will limit the preset so that it can't go above a certain level. So you can really go for it then. And it's got an inbuilt limiter. So I can now bring the slam down a bit more on this, a bit more low end. Now, whether that's your kind of sound or not, and it may well not be, uh, notice that that didn't clip at any point yesterday. The levels have gone crazy there from earlier, but now the slams got the limiting. I can go. And that's, that's not clipping at all. So I can now find a, a sound that I like, bring the slam down, keep it level, and that will sit it in those mixes without any extra plugins. Let's see what the latency is like.
that's absolutely incredible didn't even mention the little mix here where you can mix in the clean bass tone the bass so high up is mad I could add my clean tone driven thing Oh, I'd have to work on that a little bit. But, point stands, it's all there available to me. And so, that, when I saw Glenn Fricker using this, I had to go out of my way. I just went and bought it and was very happy with it. Then got in contact with the guys at Aurora DSP and now we're working together doing this video. But that was my first impression was I saw Glenn using it and just went and bought it so for sake of 40 dollars if it's impressed you go and get it from the link in the description below uh, aurora dsp uh mammoth it's incredible so guys go and get it if not well i hope you enjoyed the video either way and i want to say thank you and subscribe to the channel and all that kind of jazz i'm adam Steele for hot pole studios and i'll see you in the next video see you later Hey everyone, that might be the end of the video, but if you fancy carrying on this conversation, we have a Discord server, link is in the description. We're also on Patreon, which is something you can really help us with. We also are on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Hot Pole Studios. See you there.